Put down those giant needles or hooks and pick up a giant loom. We're gonna work this irresistibly big, wonderful big stitch throw that's behind me with Red Heart's Irresistible Yarn today on Good Knit Kisses and Red Heart Yarns. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. We're so glad that you joined us today together with Good Knit Kisses and Red Heart Yarns. We have converted the pattern for the wonderful Big Stitch Throw brought to you by Red Heart Yarns and using the knitting loom. We're gonna be working with the irresistible yarn that is mostly acrylic and a little bit of wool to give you a nice affordable option to do this really cool Big Stitch roving knit blanket that you've got back here. So let's get into the supplies. Be sure and click on the link in the description below to go to the blog for more details and information how to get all the goodies you need. Let's talk about the loom that you're going to need. This is from KB Looms called the Zippy. You're going to need eight Zippy looms, four straight connectors, and four corners. This is a set of corners. It just comes together. Or you can get two master sets. You're going to take your straight connector and go through the back of the Zippy loom. The grooves are on the outside and click it like that. And then slip on your next loom and click it like that and then do that one more time so put another one on and then put in your corner connector slide it in from the back and click it in like that making sure your grooves are on the outside so this is where we put in our next one and click it so this is how you'll form your corners and you're going to go all the way around until it looks like this all right grab your loom hook and then we'll talk about yarn that's the best stuff right here we go Today's yarn is Red Heart Irresistible in a Jumbo number 7 yarn. I used about 9 to 10 balls in color aqua. Let's begin! Our cast on is going to be 34 stitches, so I won't use two of my pegs. I want to indicate the first three and last three stitches for my border stitches, so I'm just going to take these larger rubber bands and go around three of the pegs. You can go around three any pegs you want, and then you'll skip two and put it around the next three. I'm going to start with uh, these three here, and then I'm going to skip this corner peg and then this first peg on this particular loom and go on these three pegs here. Okay, so these are gonna be the first three pegs of my knitting, go around and end at these last three pegs. All right, let's move on. To start our cast on, we need to pull the yarn out from the inside and get the end. All right, so we've got our end, let's cast on. First make a slip knot. I'm going to wrap it around my fingers twice, lift the back loop over the front loop a little bit, and then do it one more time, and that makes a nice little slip knot. This is going to be our beginning chain around this first peg, and I've got these uh, bands around the first three here. So we're going to put the tail on the inside. The yarn is right before the first peg, and then my little loop back here is between the first and second peg. I'm going to turn it to the side so you can see how I do it a little bit better. I'm going to open up my two little fingers inside this nice loop and push through my working yarn, and I'm going to pull on it and make it nice and snug. Now this is where you can adjust your tail, uh, the little slip knot, and make sure it's not um, too loose and coming through the front. It doesn't usually happen, but on this uh, bigger bulky yarn, it might do that a little bit just for this first one. All right, so your loop is a little bit bigger. Move on to the next one and pull through this working yarn and see how the loop can become a little bit bigger. You can shrink it up a little bit and then move on to the next one. I'm gonna turn this around after I do a few more and show you what the um, chains look like in the back. All right, so keep going. Pause your video if you need. All right, so you can see on the back, I've got these lovely chains coming around here, and this is what your should, work should look like. You've got two loops on the back of the peg and one loop on the front of the peg. Continue working all the way around until you have two stitches left, or rather three stitches left, and that last loop will get placed on this last stitch here. So two will become, two, two pegs will be empty. All right, pause your video, and I'll meet you at that moment. See you soon. All right, we're gonna place this last uh, stitch onto our loom and pull it tight. 
I'm going to bring my yarn to the back and then around to the front to work my first stitch. All right, so row one, we're going to take this yarn and put it below this first stitch, and this is where we get to pick up our loom tool. Okay, our loom pick, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to go down into this loop here, and we're going to pull up this working yarn through that. And I use these grooves and I push real hard, especially on this bulky yarn, because I don't want to accidentally grab the pieces of that yarn. I, I just want to get a full, um, full grab of the yarn. Okay, so we're going to take off this old loop and place on the new loop for a purl stitch. And I just want to pull gently. I don't need to pull really tight, especially on this pattern and with this yarn, we want to keep it nice and loose. So all your stitches are going to be nice and loose. We're going to do that again. It's going to be a whole purl row. So we're going to go down through this loop, pick up this new one. So purling, we're picking a purl up from the ocean. Take the old loop off, put the new loop on, and put your working yarn down to the next one and continue. You're going to do that for all the stitches. Pause your video and meet me back up for row two. See you in a moment. All right, you've got row one down. Now we're going to knit. Now there are two different types of knit stitches on here. I'm going to show you both of them individually. So you can choose whether you want to do a U-wrap knit or an E-wrap knit. You choose either one of those for your whole blanket whenever I call a knit stitch, okay? So the first one I want to show you is a U-wrap knit. This is closest looking to the needle knit blanket. You're going to take your working yarn, wrap around your peg so the yarn is above the loop that's on there already. It makes sort of a U, uh, it's wrapping the peg in a U shape. So we're going to take the bottom loop up and over that loop up on top all right and knit that off and that creates the knit stitch it is traditionally more like the needle knit stitch okay if you want to make an e-wrap you're simply going to go from behind the peg around in the direction you're moving and then you wrap around it that way okay so it makes a cursive it's upside down but like a cursive e shape back here Okay, that's why it's called an e-wrap. Now this is also a twisted knit stitch or knit through the back loop and so it creates sort of a Y shape, you know, that hovers over itself rather than a strict like a V shape. So that's really the difference. You just wrap it that way and then you knit up and over. This will be a looser stitch and you'll have to complete less rows versus the u-wrap, except I think the u-wrap makes a nice uniform look. Okay, so we're going to move on. I'm going to be making all mine in the U-Wrap knit to show you what that sample looks like. Continue knitting all the way around your loom and meet me back up for the next step. See you soon. All right, way to go. You've completed rows one through two, which forms a garter ridge. You're going to make one more garter ridge, which is repeating rows one and two. You're going to make one purl row again and another knit row again. Pause your video, work on that. I'll meet you back up for the next step. See you soon. All right, so we're ready for the next step. We're on row five, and we're going to work with this little set of rubber bands that I've put on here. So the first set is on these three stitches, you're going to purl these three stitches, and then you will knit until the next rubber band. So even though it kind of matches to me, I still can see that this is here. So I'm gonna put the yarn in the front and work it uh, for all the bands, uh, all the stitches that are covered by the bands. And then I'm going to knit. And again, you're going to knit in the U-wrap knit stitch uh, or the E-wrap, whichever one you prefer. And I prefer um, if you do the E-wrap stitch, make sure that you're not wrapping it uh, too tightly by wrapping all the pegs at once. I would, uh, on this, especially with this particular yarn and how big and bulky it is, I think it's better, you'll get a better effect if you do them individually one at a time. Sometimes people do the E-wrap stitch because they like to pre-wrap the loom. And that's okay, but it could lead to um, the stitches are too tight. All right, so keep going. Uh, pause your video. I'll meet you back for the last three stitches and the beginning of row six. See you soon. All right, the end of row five, we're going to purl the last three stitches. So just like the first three, uh, we are purling. Now, 
what this does is it creates that garter ridge just as we did for the beginning uh, border on the end. So we'll be working that by the next row. Row six is completely knit. So you're just gonna knit across just as you've done before when you were doing the garter borders. And every time you're going in this direction, you're knitting every stitch. And when you're going in the opposite direction, you're making the first and last three stitches pearls. So continue working row six as knit. So you're going to continue working rows five through six until you reach about 48 inches or 122 centimeters. All right, pause your video. When you get to that point, I'll see you soon. I want to show you how to add in your first ball of yarn or skein. They only have 29 yards or 26 meters on each ball because they're very bulky, this jumbo size yarn. So you're going to want to add in several times. You can do one of two things. You can leave the tails long and continue knitting and then working those tails in or you can tie it in a knot and cut it. Now in this yarn, it's just, it's fine to do that. Um, and then you know you've got a nice secure knot. So I would just um, go right behind the peg and ensure that that knot is gonna be right behind that stitch. And we're going to wrap around and then go in the opposite and wrap around and make a nice tight knot make sure it's nice and secure and on the back of that stitch and pulling on that make sure it's secure and so when you know it is um, what I do is I'll go ahead and knit my next stitch okay and then I go ahead and cut this be sure you're not cutting that knot or your other tail all right, and so now it's hid safely behind these stitches and I can continue working uh, onward. All right, so I hope that helps you in changing your yarn. Pause your video and I'll see you when you get much further along. See you in a little bit. After you've knit your length, mine is about 47 or 48 inches, you're gonna to want to make sure that your working yarn is at the end of a knit row. So I need to knit one more row and get it over here. We're going to complete it by making this garter edge again. You need two more ridges. And see, so you've got this side border here and your stocking net in the middle. This is what mine looks like with the U-wrap or yours might look a little more twisty with an E-wrap. Get all the way to the end there, complete a purl row then a knit row, another purl row, and a knit row, and I will meet you back up for the bind off. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. Okay, so we are ready for the bind off. We're going to do a chain one bind off or chain bind off. We're gonna need a crochet hook or you can use your finger, that's perfectly fine. And you've got a your loom tool. It's easier to pick up with this big yarn. Um, go ahead and pick it up with your loom tool and put it right onto your hook or your finger. And we're just gonna lay this down and we're going to yarn over with our hook. So yarn over and pull through and we're gonna chain one. Then we pick up the next loop and place it on our hook. And then we lift this back loop up and over. So you can pull it straight through or you can use your fingers. And you'll notice it's gonna be tight on this next one. What I want you to do is pull it back. If you have the hook, it's perfect for that. Pull it back to get this gauge on here. And then yarn over and pull through, just as you did before, chain one, and let it go all the way back here so you can get this thickness here. So if you wanna make it on your finger, you're gonna try and keep it a little loose because we don't want the bind off to shrink up. So the key is after you uh, have one that's tighter on here, you wanna yarn over and chain through one, pick up the next one, put it through, lift up and over, okay, like that. And then you wanna yarn over to chain one, okay? And you'll see how this starts working up looking like that. So you keep going all the way around until you get to this last loop and I'll meet you there. See you soon. Okay, we're on our last stitch here, and I'm gonna lift this up and over and wrap one more time. And this is actually the end of my yarn. I used all of it, so I'm just gonna pull that on through. You can cut yours and pull it through. And then you'll want to weave in this tail and this beginning tail into the back of your work. And I suggest um, moving it up underneath uh, some of these 
uh, the side part here on your salvage edge. Okay, and so go underneath this stitch here and come here, and we're gonna go to this row and follow around this stitch here and go down and then go to this other side here up through this loop and then go around and down this direction and just keep going until you run out of yarn you can even work it in the same the opposite direction and tuck it in between and under these stitches here to get it all locked in nice and neat to where you don't really notice it there and then do the same on this side too and I'll flip this around and show it to you oh <laughs> you've got me cuddling well I certainly enjoyed making this blanket I hope you enjoy making yours be sure and comment below what color did you make in your irresistible yarn we can't wait to see it be sure and tag at red heart yarns or at good knit kisses or both and let us know what you did for your blanket. We'd love to see it. On behalf of Good Knit Kisses and Red Heart Yarns, thank you so much for joining us today. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure and do that and click on that bell icon for notifications on new videos. We hope you have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye-bye.